Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video where today we return with round 13 of season 3 of the F124 driver career mode. Yes, we're back this weekend here at the Hungaro ring. Of course, if you missed out on the video uh, that went live a couple of days ago from Silverstone, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. And... If you didn't watch the opening round of our F1 2000 career mode that went live yesterday, yeah, go back, check it out. It was a rather entertaining one uh, from Australia as well there. But ultimately in this series, as we've got two races left before the summer break, uh, I think it's safe to say we are officially the number two driver within the team. Another mechanical failure from a race lead has given us a huge deficit now to Charles Leclerc as we get towards the summer break. 98 points now, the difference between myself and our teammate it looks like Max Verstappen is likely going to be his only rival into the second half of the campaign now I'll be honest I'm kind of happy to let them scrap where possible still uh, but obviously if things get really really tight towards the end of the year then I am absolutely going to play the number two role you know we want glory back at Ferrari more than anything else uh, apart from maybe a working engine as well uh, still inside this series that would be absolutely wonderful as well there but quickly as well I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody uh, for 131,000 subscribers of course yeah we're trying to hit 140k at the moment so if if you aren't already, please do make sure you hit that sub button as well for daily Formula 1 content as well. But yeah, Hungary, it's been a track that I've never particularly enjoyed in the past, but uh, obviously we had a lot of fun at Spain, so I'm hoping we can enjoy this weekend as well. Welcome to Hungary. Who's got the appetite for success in practice here in Budapest? Well, heading back out then onto the Hungarian circuit. Yeah, this circuit, like I've always said, it's not one of my favourites, but in a car like this, hopefully we can have a bit of fun here and maybe extract some good pace out of it as well. Is that in the final corner? First tyre wear lap. Not only did we not get the purple score, we also didn't even get the delta. Like, definitely still notice it's been a glitch in all recent F1 games, but they definitely don't scale um, the programs very well as you move further through the series. We just cannot get anything done. Well, not a particularly successful free practice session so far, and usually the qualifying sim run uh, is the worst of all. Yeah, it just assumes this car's able to go. Essentially, sometimes it genuinely sets the targets at close to a second faster than what anybody's able to do as we move into qualifying. I don't quite get how something like that still hasn't been altered, but as we navigate our way through the middle sector, of course, as soon as I'm talking about this, might not be a problem here as well. We actually throw it in towards those final few corners of the lap. As we make our way then through the final corner, you can just see every single time we lose the delta on that final hairpin, half a tenth away, apparently that means I'm going to qualify P5. Let's see how accurate this game is. It is time for the drivers to dance on the edge. You are never resting, you are never still in qualifying for the Hungarian Grand Prix right here at the Hungara Ring. Well, I was looking back through the videos we've done so far this series. Clearly, I don't want to absolutely, you know, destroy everybody in qualifying. We've done it twice so far, back in Imola and then, of course, last time at Silverstone. Uh, and both those Grand Prix, we ended up with a mechanical failure. I don't think we're going to have the opportunity to dominate qualifying this weekend, though. McLaren are looking racy there. Oscar Piastri fastest in Q1. Went quicker than Lando Norris uh, and Charles Leclerc. It can only line up P3. Uh, one shocker as well out in Q1. Fernando Alonso couldn't get a clean lap in and ended up nearly two and a half seconds off the pace. So, yeah, we might have a few surprises this weekend. We've got to make sure we're not the shock out in Q2. Well, so far, this lap's felt pretty good. We're aiming for a mid to high 1 minute 14 here. As we round our way out of the final corner again, a little bit of understeer. 14 8. But just P6. That should see us through, but not particularly as safe as I'd like. And there we go. As soon as I talk about it, Charles Leclerc decides he's going to start running fastest times yet again there. But McLaren actually going slower than they did in Q1, but Oscar Piastri still getting the better of his teammate Lando Norris. Uh, Carlos Sainz again makes it through into Q3 in that V-carb. Uh, but yeah, we need to find a good half a second here. Whatever we do, I'm just never quick at the Hungaro ring. All right, come on then. Let's go for it. First run in Q3. We're just really going to have to try and find our zen here. Try to find that little bit extra like we were able to last time out at Silverstone. This time, it's not to give ourselves breathing room over the rest of the field. It's simply to keep up with them. I'd love to try and get a couple more wins 
on the board before the summer break. You can now see Verstappen finding more and more pace as well in that Red Bull. He's down to a low 14. This track should suit their car. Obviously a lot more downforce on it than the Ferrari. Lando Norris, though, that's what we were expecting from McLaren. A 14 flat. And there we go, Charles Leclerc, first driver into the 13s all weekend. I mean, these are some ridiculous lap times as we try and hang it near enough flat out through the exit of Sector 2. Never quite know how aggressive you can be through this final sector of the lap. We've just got to try and get the car rotated in there, get on that throttle nice and early. Try and find the apex through the final corner. Don't allow the nose to run too wide too early. And the final corner up towards the line. It is going to be a 1.14.0. We are back in the fight. We are currently on the front row. What well, as we head back out then, the team's computer simulations reckon that there is another 0 0.0276 in the car. That's a very specific number. The gap to Charles Leclerc, 0 0.0277. So the team think... We can't beat Charles Leclerc here. I want to try and prove them wrong. Maybe if I do, they're going to switch my engine off yet again. We'll have to wait and see what happens as we start our final lap in anger here in Hungarian Grand Prix qualifying. Breaking at that pit exit line in nice and early as you try and open up the DRS aim of turn one there. And that's the 10th up. So you look for about 75 metres out for turn two. Roll on that throttle nice and early to get the car back over to the left-hand side. So you can feed it through the right. Now turn four. Best corner of the lap. Just got to flick it in sick gear there. Oh, not as aggressive. Your flying lap. This is your last chance to set a time. Come on. I'll well, never have that radio message from Mark, but we know we've got to get on with it. Oh, as we dip a wheel on the grass, have to tip it into the chicane nice and early. Try to counteract the understeer. Oh, no, it's gone. It's gone. Just pushing too hard. Don't hit the wall. Ah, ha. We just about dodged it there, but we're going to line up at very best. I think we are Q2. I think everybody else has finished their runs. I'm happy we didn't bring any damage back to the team, though. A very, very fine margin then at the end of qualifying, but it is Charles Leclerc that claims pole position ahead of all four Brits lining up behind him. Perez and qualifies for Sappen. Haven't said that very often this game. Uh, and Oscar Piastri there, his quickest time still... Ended up being in Q1. So a bit of a bottle job there by Oscar. Ahead of Stroll and Carlos Sainz. But once again, it is a Ferrari front row lockout. Surely we can try and control this race from the front. Button, Hill, Alonso and Kovalainen. The names of the drivers who had their breakthrough in Budapest. Winning their first Grand Prix right here. Fourteen corners then for our drivers to navigate at the 2.7 mile Hungaroring today. It's six lefts and eight rights to comprise a lap here with an average speed around 120 miles an hour. And the final corner, a favourite of Esteban Ocon, given that he exited it and won his first Grand Prix here. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Fantastic effort from Charles Leclerc yesterday and it's put him on pole and Firestarter completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Norris, Russell, Hamilton, Perez, Verstappen, Oscar Piastri, Stroll, Sainz, Gasly, Albert, Behrman, Hulkenberg, Joe, Sonoda, Ricardo, Vesti, Fernando Alonso, and Esteban Ocon lines up at the back of the grid. It's almost time for the lights to go out. So let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. It's race day, it's gonna be a thriller. I'm Alex Jakes, alongside me is Naomi Schiff. Well, they say you're only as good as your last race. And on evidence there, that was very good indeed. How do they carry that form through to today? Well, they're certainly in a great position. It's always great to just come off of a win. The momentum's there, the team are working well together, and so is the car. So what they've got to do is just keep building on that. Don't change a winning formula, keep it simple, and keep doing what you're doing. With this being a high downfall circuit, we're not going to have quite the same top speed we have at other tracks. The good news is, though, it's going to make our DRS even more effective than normal. So try to make the most of it during the race and quality if you can. 
Well, Naomi Schiff certainly wasn't talking about me then at the end of that interview there, because obviously we certainly did not win last time out at the British Grand Prix. And as we look towards the track here today, I think we're in for another difficult, difficult race. The team is saying mediums to hards. I want to gamble it, though. I think we know that the hard tyres can go really deep into the Grand Prix here. I want to try and get past Leclerc off the start. The dirty air is atrocious around this circuit. So if we can't keep up with him, then I want to really, really try and make sure that we're ahead of him early on. It'll also mean we hopefully won't trip over each other when it comes to the pit window as well. So softs for us. I'm hoping he is going to be on the mediums, which he is. It's a bit of a gamble, but it might be an inspired call. It is five red lights, however... It's going to be lights out, and away we go for the Hungarian Grand Prix there. And annoyingly, I've gone and completely wasted that extra tyre life. As George Russell trying to look down the inside, ready for turn one. Leclerc will go uncontested in towards that first corner there, as we'll try and pinch the Merc. who got off to, yeah, to a very, very good start there. Verstappen making moves as well, immediately back up into P5. But there is a golden opportunity for Charles Leclerc this weekend to try and open up his title lead even further over the Dutchman there. He had a bit of a nightmare last time out at Silverstone as well. Max Verstappen just needs to find a little bit more out of that car. Especially when, yeah, look, uh, sorry, Perez went quicker than him, didn't he, in qualifying. So there clearly was more time to be had in that Red Bull then. But as we try and navigate our way through this middle sector on lap one, got to try and get those tyres up to temperature. Um, but yeah, Leclerc though, that was the dream start for him. He's controlled the pace off the start. He can now really try and walk away from me. So we've got to be careful not to cook this rubber. This was what I was most scared about early on in this race. Leclerc just able to control the pace at the front of the field. And he's not even going to try and bother backing me up. He's just going to go for it here already. As we come around the final couple of corners, DRS about to be enabled. He's got that gap over me up over a second. So we're going to be under pressure uh, from George Russell. Can't help but feel we would struggle more early on if we were on the medium still. But yeah, Leclerc, another three tenths on me. He is just flying. It is so difficult psychologically early on watching, you know, the big championship rival. The guy that you have to try and beat. And we've just got nothing against him here as here comes Russell down the inside at turn one. So I'm trying to be really, really careful on the ties as well, though. That's the other balancing act. We've got to try and perform early on. I knew if we didn't get past Leclerc, then it would have been a big gamble. As we look at the grip Russell's got. Clean around the outside through turn two. Whoa, we tried to hang on to it. We will re-emerge alongside, but I think we'll back out of it up into turn four. And Russell now splits the Mercs. Uh, sorry, splits the Ferraris in his Merc. I mean, look at that. We've got the DRS still off George Russell, but we're losing time to him. Down the front straight there, the McLaren now, Lando Norris. I mean, everybody is just lining up to have a go, aren't they, at the moment? Tyres, oh yeah, we're overheating those front lefts. We're overheating both left-hand side tyres here. This is not good. We've got to try and claw them back into the range. Or, have to go for a really early box onto a set of hard tyres. And now we've lost the DRS to George Russell. I think we're going to be even more vulnerable. Lando Norris now trying to have a look down the inside into Turn 1. Oh, a little bit of contact there. Wanted to really try and squeeze him. I think he just got pushed out a little bit by the curbing. Okay, Lando ahead. They're holding us up now, so let's please try and get past as soon as possible and get on with our race. Push, push. I mean, we are just getting mugged off through turn two every single time there. Everybody's got the grip on me. This time around, we're going to try and fight it up into turn four as round the outside of Lando will go. We got a little bit of a wobble on the exit, but I think we have completed the move. And here comes Verstappen now. Trying to have a look down the inside. So Verstappen now trying to go for it. Of course, he's the other one we have got to work with our teammate for. And this is just working out beautifully for Russell and Leclerc. We are causing a trolley train right now. And not a particularly pretty one. I mean, we are basically just okay, saving up the battery each and every lap. Eight seconds. But it is not good enough. Max Verstappen now down the inside at turn one. I don't really want to leave him on the outside for turn two. But what am I going to do? Give him the inside line? No, we're not even going to be there. Verstappen probably going to end up with the track position. As down the inside, we'll try and have a look. Oh, a little bit of contact there. As Verstappen just kind of told me, yeah, not happening, buddy. I want to try and get to about lap 10 before we box. But I think we're going to have to dive in pretty soon. I mean, look at those left-hand side tyres at the moment. Even both rears now. We have absolutely cooked both rear tyres here. So we have really got the setup wrong this weekend. There's oh, even more contact with Lando. 
And I didn't realise he was all the way down the inside there, but never do I think we've experienced three tyres overheating oh, so far on this game. As we just nudge over the kerb and you can see how sensitive it makes the car as well. We are just all over the show. You might start to notice it soon. I mean, yeah, we, we've got to dive in now. We cannot drive on these tyres. I mean, that's the other thing as well. I still feel like sometimes on these games is you just cannot manage the temperature either. You know, when do you see drivers going, you know, three, four seconds off the pace to try and get their tyre temperatures back down? It just doesn't happen in modern day Formula 1. But at just the end of lap 8 then into the pits we're going to go, okay. we have gone nowhere near as far as we needed to. Focus on this pit stop. Yeah, we've just got to try and put everything behind us and get some clean laps under our belt in some clear air. Come on, tidy pit stop. Thank you. That was a fantastic stop. Faster than we were expecting. Well, Ferrari either seemed to give us absolutely brilliant stops or absolutely terrible ones. Luckily, this time round, it has been a good one. Complete. See these tyres through to the end now. Yeah, we want to ideally try and get these tyres to the end of the afternoon. But we could see a safety car or a red flag or anything crazy still. We've got to ease this second set of Pirellis in a lot more gently than we did the first okay, ones. The bodies incurred some slight damage, but nothing too serious at the moment. Just be careful. I forgot to mention it on the grid rundown. It is quite funny to me that Ocon and Alonso, obviously the two drivers that managed to bag Ocon that win back in 2021, they started on the back row of the grid together. So always nice that things come around in Formula 1. They always end up going full circle, but... Yeah, Charles Leclerc still leading this race at the front of the field. A snap on the win, hot pursuit with George Russell. So, but, yeah, I tell you what, our pace now on these hards is not looking bad. Oh, great stuff. You hit that target. Really good job. Well, I've got to admit, after coming off the soft compound tyres, these hards feel absolutely wonderful right now. So you're just really able to lean in on them, but not too aggressively. I mean, just don't use the soft compound tyres here at Hungary. They just don't work around this venue. But, yeah, we're closing back in on the rest of the AI. Might actually be able to get a decent undercut here. I don't think we'll be back inside the top three. But we might still end up ahead of Lando. Oh, here we go. Esteban Ocon. Sorry, Fred Vesti and Nico Hulkenberg, even I should say, having a battle. In fact, the Hulkenberg got his first Grand Prix points in about three years. Last time out at Silverstone. Uh, yeah, things have come crashing down immediately for him here uh, this weekend. There's Vesti now to the back of the field. I don't know. How, uh, Fred Vesti, I tell you what. I think I've battled with him in the last four Grand Prix pretty much back to back. I don't know how we keep anything up right near him, but it's probably not looking good for me. So try and have a look right around the outside. Nope, we'll try and switch him up in towards the hairpin. Sauber driver going to go defensive. Whoa. Okay. And for the second time then in 10 years, a Ferrari has locked the rears and made an overtake on the Sauber whilst trying to save their own car. See Kimi Raikkonen, I believe it was on Felipe Nasa here back in 2016. As we know, all of the other Ferrari-powered teams really struggling. Olkenberg there, my old teammate, tries to give me a bit of a block. And I will remind him why I got the call to Ferrari and not the German. Oh, we've got yellows. We've got yellows. Someone's gone... Don't know who it is. Oh, it's Yuki Tsunoda. Yuki Tsunoda's had a mechanical failure, and, well, his teammate there, Esteban Ocon, almost goes into the back of him. We somehow will get around the pair of them then in one go, so I guess we've rather cheekily have made a double overtake there on the Alpines. But Tsunoda out. Thought we might see a few drivers scramble into the pit lane then, potentially to try and bag a cheap stop. Don't think anybody's dived in, though, yet, still apart from myself. Can we try and switch so I knew out of the final corner? Ooh. Well, I should have been able to switch him. Uh, instead, we tried to give him a little bit of a push back down in towards turn one. There we go. Leclerc now in the pits. So I think Sean, yeah, will still have the jump on me. But you tell you what, the pace we've had recently, maybe, just maybe, we can get a bit closer to Verstappen and Russell again. Uh, so Daniel ricardo has gone. We've had two mechanical failures in a lap then. And clearly... Some technical gremlins starting to creep in for other drivers. Had that happened just a few seconds earlier, we could have had a safety car in this race. If there's two cars stopped on track, the FIA will always call it. So hopefully now we're going to be back up inside the top ten. All of our tire pressure data is currently reading zero. Assuming they still look inflated to you, we're going to guess that it's just a bad sensor. Shouldn't be anything to worry about. See, what I reckon it should do when it says that is all of your tires should say like zero or either that or 100%. 
just for a couple of laps so you got no idea what they are doing. Uh, but yeah, we've got the jump on Max Verstappen here. I really wasn't expecting that. So let's try and see if we can get up to Russell. Uh, but Leclerc now, only six seconds ahead of me. We've actually recovered this. There we go. Most of one of the runners into the pit lane then, including Oli Behrman and Oscar Piastri as well there. As, yeah, Verstappen, though, has immediately caught back up to me. I mean, can we use him to our advantage? I don't really know. There is Russell making his way out of the pit lane. So we are, I mean, Ferrari are back into 1-2 formation here. So we've done really well over these last few laps. I guess we've got to try and keep the staff at bay to help Charles Leclerc out. And if we've got a safety car or a red flag or anything like that in the second half of the race, we are back in the fight. Oh, there you go. Charles Leclerc, new fast lap of the day. I mean, admittedly, it's only four tenths quicker than anything I've done. I don't think we're going to be in that fight unless we see something crazy happen. There's Verstappen now trying to have a look for it. And now we've got to try and get our defending shoes on. Stay on the inside. We will try and hang. And just squeeze him out on the exit. Verstappen. I mean, we are now a true number two. And Verstappen again then. I mean, we could be seeing this a lot towards the end of the afternoon. The Dutchman trying to look back around the outside. Lord Russell is right there as well. So again, we'll just force him out on the exit of turn one. He's going to have to try something a bit different. Yeah, uh, Russell, sorry, right there. Now, Hamilton, he's closing in as well. We know how good Merck have been around this circuit in years gone by. But I think, yeah, unless something crazy would have happened to our teammate, nobody else is really going to get a look in. Verstappen's dropping back. Why on earth is Max Verstappen dropping back then? That gap suddenly opened up to almost two seconds. I don't know whether he's made a mistake. Russell certainly can't seem to fire away to round him, so maybe they've just been battling each other. And now suddenly, yeah, Verstappen, 1.4. I think he's regathered it up. But could we see Russell try and get a run on him back down towards Turn 1? No, the Merc. Yeah, there we go. Look at that Russell down the inside of Turn 1. Are we going to see Verstappen be able to defend the move off of the corner? I don't think he will. He's going to try it going the long way around. But Russell, is he through? I don't really know what's going on between these two, but I'm just trying to make sure we keep the gap. And there we go, George Russell then is through and up into P3 of the race. Admittedly, I do still want to defend from him, but not as badly as I need to defend from Verstappen. Ah, oh, here we go, George Russell then. Let's see how competitive the Merc is in a straight line. Might have a little bit more than Verstappen did earlier on. Now I'm sure the Dutchman, yeah, will be watching this, trying to figure out a way he can get back past the Mercedes. We'll defend again for now. We've got 13 laps to go after this one. I mean, if we could somehow walk away with P2, that would be a miraculous recovery drive. Not with lines like that, we won't. I mean, we have basically just got to try and defend like a lion right now. And even when I do use battery, Russell's still able to get a little bit closer down towards Turn 1. The only thing is, I reckon if we did get a good run out of that final corner, we might be able to just sit on the racing line. Problem is, I don't want us being vulnerable to a dive bomb or anything like that either. So, we're kind of having to compromise ourselves to hopefully not have to compromise ourselves. It's a little bit weird, but at the moment, we are getting the job done. I mean, yeah, we'll try it. We'll try and stay on the racing line back down towards Turn 1. And immediately, Russell there has a look down the inside. We'll try and make sure we focus on getting our own run off of Turn 1 there, which we will. So we're still going to be wheel to wheel with the Mercedes. Everybody early on this afternoon able to just go around our outside through turn two. And Russell might be able to make another one there. So we'll try and switch him off the exit of the corner. Use plenty of battery. Use this for our straight line speed to its advantage. And Russell backs out. And we will swoop through. So I guess we've learnt we can go around the exit at turn four. I guess we've also learnt we need to defend the inside at turn one. Well, I have been impressed with just how well these hard tyres have hung on throughout most of this stint. I mean, you could easily do a whole race to them. Yeah, I'm not too worried about the car behind. Well, no, I'm completely worried about the car behind, aren't I, at this stage of the day. But, I mean, this is just a quintessential Hungarian Grand Prix. People cannot make overtakes around this circuit. A lot of people... I mean, it does deliver a good race in the wet. And I suppose with the ground effect cars, it is definitely a lot better than it used to be. But the problem as well is with Hungary is what could you really do to fix it? Apart from maybe cut out the final couple of hairpins and turn it into like a fast sweeper or something. There's not really a lot you can do with this venue. And, as well, it's pretty historic now. 
Ah, oh, no, I forgot to defend from Russell. I forgot to defend from Russell again back down towards turn one. Luckily, the more laps we do, the less advantages the AI have. And you can see that time around. They have a snapper now. Trying to look back around the outside of the Merc. He's going to dive it in, almost clatter into the back of myself. Who's going to come out on top, though? I mean, again, we've just got to use this as an opportunity to break away. Verstappen and Russell side by side up the hill, but I think the Dutchman's going to do it. And Verstappen then back up into the final podium place, but still stuck looking at my rear wing. And I'm sure now Verstappen's going to be going for it even more aggressively with me. I, mean, I, think, I don't really know whether he's got more straight line speed or less than the Merc, but to the outside again, he'll go. And again, I think Verstappen... He's a bit more, you know, kind of sensible with it. He'll appreciate that if he can't make the move, he's got to back out early, not to leave himself vulnerable to Russell behind again. Hamilton now has caught up to the back of this train as well. Uh, and I think we could have even more with us before this race is done and dusted. I mean, Leclerc, yeah, is pulling out close to a second a lap right now. He has just walked away with this one. It's been one of the most boring races in the world, I'm sure, for Charles Leclerc, but he won't care. Because he is at the front of the field, and it looks like once again he's going to extend his championship lead over his rivals. I mean, things are looking pretty comfortable there. As again, I forget to defend the inside as much as I should be. Oh, a little bit of rear lock in there. Verstappen will kind of pick up on that vulnerability, but again, we'll get the power down on the exit of the corner, and again we will hang on. Uh, uh, Verstappen, Verstappen there. I wasn't expecting him to muscle and move down the inside there. I mean, this time around it would give me the DRS. And we'll try and make sure we give him the room on the exit of the corner as well. But surely now, with the extra straight line speed, never yeah, Verstappen not going to be able to do anything there. And he might again be vulnerable to George Russell. He's going to try and dive it down the inside of him at turn one. Hamilton, he better get the popcorn out for this because he has had what a view towards the end of the afternoon. Again, they're going to be wheel to wheel out of the first couple of corners. And again, Russell tries to hang it around the outside through the second corner. Is he going to be able to make it work? I think he has. And suddenly now, Verstappen again on the back foot. As we've been given a new Delta target. Um, but, yeah, funnily enough, again, we've got bigger things to worry about. Five laps to go after this one. Leclerc, probably going to have a 30-second lead by the end of this race. Let's see wins that large, usually, in this ground effect era. But again, George Russell will look for it. That time around, he's much, much braver on the brakes. They're struggling a little bit with rear locking. And now, this time around, the Merc might be able to go the long way around me. How are we going to fare on the inside round at turn two? You can break a little bit later there, but Russell, he's got the grip on the inside. Oh, we just get a little bit shoveled out. Ooh. Hang on to it. Hang on to it. Avoid the wall. We'll rejoin. And it's into the side of Lewis Hamilton. And suddenly now, our defensive drive. Repeat serious damage to the underbody. Our defensive drive just starting to evaporate now as Gasly and Albon waiting in the wings. Has. They've got an absolute rocket ship now I've left the team, so no idea what I was doing wrong with them. But, yeah, suddenly all podium hopes have evaporated. Leclerc, though, I think he's pretty safe at the front of the field. And luckily, Verstappen still only in P3. And Hamilton, he hasn't got the DRS off of Verstappen in front there, so Hamilton might be vulnerable back through turn one and turn two. Now he, he has got the DRS. Not too sure what to make of that one. Um, but yeah, we're not down and out entirely yet. We could still try and get the run back on Lewis. I mean, yeah, I think he might have also picked up a bit of damage inside that contact there. I mean, we were just trying to get back on the road. And he was adamant he was holding his line as well, so I do apologise. We struggled to keep up with him out of the final corner. But look at the run we can get back down towards turn one to the inside of the Merc. The car behind, let's keep pushing. And unlike Verstappen, we can actually get it slowed down into the corner there. So we are back up into P4 then of this race. Verstappen and Russell still fighting in front. Maybe if they can hold each other up enough, we can get back in the podium fight. Three laps to go. Oh no, Lewis is coming back at me. How many times have we had to try and defend down in towards turn one? And how many times have we just about been able to make it work there? I didn't expect my battle towards the end of this race to be with Gasly and Alex Albon of Haas and Williams respectively. Well, that's the way things have ended up. McLaren, how have they messed up this race so badly? No, he's not. Um, how on earth? Yeah, they went from being fastest Q1 and Q2 to it looks like they're going to take over a handful of points here. They are executing things. 
pretty much as badly as they seem to be occasionally in real life. And round in the final corner then to start the last lap of the Hungarian Grand Prix. And what a crazy race this ended up being. Final lap of the race. Final lap. I'll be honest, yeah, had you told me after the first pit stop that we were battling for a podium towards the end, I probably wouldn't have believed you there. Hamilton oh, almost got the switch back on me. Almost completely mugged me off through turn one, but not quite able to put the power down there. Just saw the Merc have a little bit of a wobble there. Verstappen, annoyingly, looks like he's going to get the better of George Russell in the end, but ultimately, we stopped Leclerc from ever being vulnerable. He could have boxed and claimed fastest lap, Except for he already had fastest lap in this Grand Prix. Complete domination this weekend by Charles Leclerc. Pole position, fastest lap, race victory. And I'm pretty certain he led just about every lap as well in the process. Really cannot complain for him with one more round before the summer break. And that gap over his teammate now up over 100 points there. Verstappen through the final couple of corners. He is going to come through for P2 when all is said and done. 6.7 seconds. George Russell and Mercedes once again, ever since Monaco, they've been a lot closer to the fight at the front of the field as well. And it is a sight to behold inside this series. But for us, we made a bad strategy call early on. We recovered it beautifully. One little mistake towards the end of the afternoon made the difference. And almost a second out of that final corner. The man from Monaco will win again. Charles Leclerc takes the chequered flag. Well, that's two wins in a row for them now. That's really going to help them gain confidence and start to build that momentum that they're really going to be looking for. Here come our winners now. A thrilling race and a tremendous effort by Ferrari. Their history is well known, so it's no surprise to fans the world over to see them come out on top once again. I can't wait to hopefully try to return to the podium at some point in the near future. Haven't been there uh, since that win back in Barcelona four races ago. And boy, oh boy, uh, does that podium streak at the start of the year feel like a long time ago. Charles Leclerc takes the win here in Hungary ahead of Verstappen and George Russell there with myself in P4 ahead of Hamilton, Gasly, Albon. Both McLarens and Alonso from the back of the grid. What a recovery drive that was by the Spaniard there to get the better of Sergio Perez when all is said and done. Ricardo and Sonoda, you two that failed to see the checkered flag. That means in terms of the championship, uh, Leclerc now with a 58-point lead before we head into the summer break. Of course, we've got one more race uh, next time out at spa Francorchamps before we take a little bit of a pause, obviously. We'll be back, uh, I would have thought, in that break with a couple more episodes of the 2000 career there. Less than a 40-point gap now to Lando Norris there as Russell as well, cutting down that margin. Piastri still ahead of Alonso there and Hamilton, only in P8 ahead of Sergio Perez there. And Albon now is ahead of Lance Stroll. You love to see it. Pierre Gasly having a brilliant campaign as well with Haas. It's good to see our old team still scoring decent points there. The gap to Red Bull, it does open up once again. They could be vulnerable to McLaren and Mercedes uh, by the end of the year. There is Williams still ahead of Haas and V-Carb. Alpine all the way down in ninth place now as Kick Sauber still yet to score a point. But thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like, get yourself subscribed, and we'll be back very soon with more F124 content.